what you guys i get asked all the time can you go back to windows 10 from windows 11 and still have your version of windows 10 activated when you go back even after 10 days you can go back to windows uh, 10 whenever you feel like it if you don't like windows 11 or if you're having issues with windows 11 and you want to go back to windows 10 you can do and the other part of the question what people ask is will my version of windows 10 be activated now if you've missed the rollback period after 10 days you can do a fresh install of windows uh, 10 and it will still be activated and i'll show you exactly uh, how it works in this video but first let's have a quick word from today's sponsor this video has been sponsored by geekom if you're looking for mini pcs laptops or any type of accessories like keyboard and mice then geekom have you covered they're also running an egg hunt right now, which you can go over there and check out. I'll leave all the link in the video description. So go to geekompc.com. Okay, so we're on Windows 11 here. And what we want to do is go back to Windows 10. Now, there's a couple of ways you can go about doing this, but you can see here, if I go to the start button and I go to settings, you can see that inside here, if I go to uh, the activation window, we can see that Windows 11 is activated. Now, even if he was activated with a Windows 11 key or Windows 10 key, you can still go back to Windows 10. And even if you didn't upgrade from Windows 10 to Windows 11, you can still go back to Windows 10 here. So this was activated. So this was activated as a Windows 11 Pro system. And what I want to do is test to see whether we can go back to Windows 10. So what we need to do is go to Microsoft's website and download the media creation tool here. You should see uh, create Windows 10 installation media, the big download button here. We can hit this and download this and then we can open this up on our PC. The reason why we need to do this is because we need to get the Windows 10 ISO and it's always best to get it from Microsoft. So we're going to go ahead and download this and open it. You should see something looking like this, Windows 10 setup. And again, what we're going to do here is let this open up and get a few things ready for us. And then we can uh, go to the next stage. So let's just get a few scenarios out of the way first. If you've upgraded from Windows 10 to Windows 11 and you've gone past 10 days, you won't be able to roll back as such because you've gone past the 10 day period. You will need to do what's called an install of Windows 10, but it's going to remove all of your settings and programs and things like that. I've already covered that in other videos, but if you've got Windows 11 here and you've installed it, you won't have anything to roll back to because you installed Windows 11. You will need to do a fresh install of Windows 10, and you can do it like this if you wish. So once we get to this stage, we're going to create an installation media for a USB flash drive or download the ISO. You can leave this ticked if you wish, but I'm going to remove the tick and we're going to go next. From here, I'm going to go for the ISO file. Now, if you're doing a fresh install and you want to use your USB flash drive, you can create a bootable USB flash drive with Windows 10 on it and completely install Windows 10 that way if you wish. It's entirely up to you. Now, once this starts, it will start downloading our ISO file. The reason why we're doing it this way is because I wanted to show you basically you can do it this way as well as creating a bootable USB flash drive. So I'll speed this process up. Once this is down, we can mount the ISO image on our computer and then we can click on the install button to set up our Windows 10 on here. And as you'll see, once we do this, it will tell us that we won't be able to save any data or any programs or any settings. We will need to back all this information up. So before you continue with this process, you need to make sure that you back up all of your data, otherwise you run the risk of losing it all. So here we have now, this is all ready. So we can click finish here now and move on to the next stage of the install. So once we click on the finish, it's gonna clean up uh, the setup process. It needs to remove a bunch of files that is used and it will go ahead and clean all these up before it continues. Once this is done, we'll be able to continue with the setup process. So let's go ahead and get our ISO file. This is our Windows 10 ISO file that we downloaded. This is it here on the desktop. So what I'm going to do is right click on this and we're going to mount this to our computer. So let's go ahead, right click and we can click on mount. This will open up the ISO file. And there we go. Inside we have our setup file. 
Now, again, if you don't want to use this method, you can use the bootable USB flash drive method where it creates a bootable USB flash drive with Windows 10, boot to that USB drive and install Windows 10 that way. This way, we can see now we're going to install Windows 10. So let's just set up our updates here so we can click on this where it says change how we receive our updates. You can either say not right now, but I'd advise you to download the updates drivers and optional features, which is recommended. Once that's done, you can click on next and it will go off on the internet and download all of the required drivers and updates and features that we require for this setup. It's going to restart our Windows 10 setup. That's normal. And once this is restarted, it will go ahead and start the uh, installation process. So it's going to check our PC one more time, get a few things ready, and then continue with the installation. So at some stage, you will get the license coming up here. So you need to accept these. And uh, we're going to accept these uh, license terms. Otherwise, if you say decline, you won't be able to continue. So we're going to accept these and move on with the installation. So let's go accept. And this is where it will say choose what to keep. As you can see here, keep files and apps is grayed out and keep your personal files only is grayed out as well. It says nothing. Basically, everything will be deleted, including your files, apps and settings. This means the system will be wiped. So what does this mean? It basically means that it's going to do a clean install of Windows 10. So all of your data and all of your programs and all of your other information is going to be wiped from the computer. So if you don't have this all backed up, you need to make a backup of your data now before you continue. Otherwise, you run the risk of losing all your data. If you don't have anything that you want to keep, then you can leave it as it is, and then you can click on Next to continue with the installation process. So let's click on Next, and you should see here, do you want to continue using this selection? Now, basically what that means is it's warning you that if you continue, you're going to lose all your data, basically. So we're going to continue, and it will get some updates ready for the system, ready to put Windows 10 back on the system. This is not rolling back to Windows 10. This is basically going to be installing Windows 10 on your computer. So any settings that you may have had on your Windows 11 system will be completely reset and there'll be nothing kept on the PC. So let this go and get some updates and we'll continue on with the installation. So I'll quickly speed this process up and you should see now it's ready to install. So basically it's now telling us it's going to install Windows uh, 10 and it's going to remove everything from our computer. This does take a fair bit of time, so be patient. I'm just going to let this go ahead and install Windows 10. Now, if you wanted to create a bootable USB media with Windows 10 on it and install it that way, you can do. It's probably the preferred method, uh, and it will go ahead and do exactly the same thing and install Windows 10 on your system. And once that's done, uh, you would have Windows 10 on your PC. Again, it will erase all the data on your PC. So either way, you're not going to be able to save your data unless you back it up. So once this is completed, it's going to restart a few times and you're going to see it boot back up and then restart about three or four times during the installation process. It's pretty normal. You may see a bit of flashing on the screen and this is uh, installing drivers and graphics drivers and things like that. It may go small like this, and that's pretty normal, and it's just going to go ahead and install this. I'm speeding this up. And once this is done, we should get to the setup stage where we can set up our account and put our uh, password in and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to be creating an offline account here. And again, I'm going to limit this experience, and I'm going to put in a name for my username. So let me just go ahead and put Brightech in here, and we can click Next. You can create a password if you want to. I'm going to skip this part. And now this is the privacy settings where everyone goes through and turns all of this stuff off. And then we're going to go ahead and accept all of this and move on to the next stage. Again, I'm going to skip all this stuff. It's just more stuff to have to go through. Again, not now for Cortana. And you're going to go through this stage where it's going to get things ready for you. I'll speed this process up. And once this is done, you should have Windows 10 installed on your system. So let me just change the resolution settings on here. And what we'll do is once I've done this, we can then check the activation to see whether our activation has been carried over from Windows 11. So let's go ahead and go to settings here. And I can already see here that it has been activated. So if I go to uh, update and security here, it will tell us whether we have an activated version of Windows 10.
Now, this key was one of those uh, cheap OEM keys. It's basically locked to the hardware of the computer. So if you change the CPU or motherboard, you generally have to buy a new key to activate. This is not a retail key, whereas you can deactivate and reactivate it with a new key. You can see here, Windows 10 Pro has now been activated with a digital license. That means it's just basically reactivated it because it's locked to the hardware of the computer. So you can go back to Windows 10 and you can, I can always go back to Windows 11 if I wanted to in the future uh, when Windows 10 ceases its lifespan. So I can go there and activate Windows 11 at a later date if I wanted to, as long as it's the same computer that I activated it on in the first place. And that's pretty much it. So you can go back to Windows 10 at any time you want uh, if you don't like Windows 11. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I'll catch you real soon. Bye for now.